For a while now, I've been wanting to do a video on all of the pop culture references or obvious inspirations in Cyberpunk 2077. But as my list grew longer and longer, the project has become a little daunting. So I've done a couple of things to make this manageable for myself. The first is I'm going to break it into different mediums. The first being video games, since Cyberpunk 2077 is a video game. And the second being that I'm going to use long play footage for the older games in this video and trailers for the new ones. And obviously for movies, I'm going to have to use trailer footage to avoid copyrights. So I'm not going to capture all the footage myself from these games like I normally do just this one time, just for my sanity so I can get this done. These games are just kind of my personal mix of things that were historically significant or games that I personally enjoyed a lot. So there's a lot that's going to be left out here, and that's going to be true of the other videos as well. But feel free to strike up a conversation in the comments about other cyberpunk video games that I didn't cover in this list. Without further ado, let's get into cyberpunk video games that inspired or were referenced in Cyberpunk 2077. Our first game is actually, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the first ever cyberpunk video game, and that is Cyberwork, released in 1982, which is a text-based adventure that probably would have missed my list if I hadn't just looked up what the first cyberpunk game was and happened to read the synopsis of the plot. Now, it's interesting, what Cyborg is about is your character gets merged with an artificial intelligence that will drain your life energy if you don't find an alternate energy source. Which, I, I just found that to be, well, strangely reminiscent of another game we're all familiar with. And so, even though I haven't heard them specifically mention this game as an inspiration for Cyberpunk 2077, I, I feel that definitely someone somewhere at CDPR must have played this game back in the day on their Apple II because it definitely seems to have a few similarities, although I admit I have not played this. So yeah, if you're curious what the first cyberpunk game ever was, it was Cyborg in 1982. For me, it's hard to even think about the cyberpunk universe without being automatically drawn to comparisons with its sort of sister slash competitor game, Shadowrun. Shadowrun's original tabletop game released just a year after the original version of Cyberpunk, and although I'm sure as products the two are competitors, for gamers it was more like they were sort of opposite sides of the coin of playing in a cyberpunk universe. Whereas cyberpunk was more focused on being realistic and took place in an alternate universe that had only minor changes to history versus our own until recently, whereas in Shadowrun the universe was still an alternate version of our own universe but took place in a future where fantasy races had re-emerged or creatures from mythology, magic exists in a widespread sense, all sorts of other things that you would expect from other types of games are merged into this futuristic cyberpunk universe. And so, again, as a gamer and as a DM, it would be the kind of thing of like, sometimes people would want to play cyberpunk, sometimes people would want to play Shadowrun and it was a different flavor of playing in that kind of universe. Now, for me, the most memorable Shadowrun game would definitely be the Genesis or Mega Drive one, which I'm showing here. Now, I know some folks played it on Super Nintendo, and we're not going to get into the whole console war debate here, but uh, the, the Genesis one was a standout one for me that I played a lot and enjoyed, and at a time when, as far as in video games, Cyberpunk was not a genre that was well represented, this was one of the few that allowed you to not just do some cyberpunk stuff, but a huge variety of stuff compared to other games that existed at the time. I want to just briefly talk about some games that probably have no business being on this list, though I'm sure a lot of people at CD Projekt Red have played them, and that's the Streets of Rage games. Now, the reason I'm including these is because both Mike and I when talking about games that inspired us to love games like Cyberpunk 2077, both named the Streets of Rage games as an inspiration for us to eventually want to play that game. And although it doesn't take place in a cyberpunk universe, Streets of Rage definitely has a lot of neon lights and it definitely has a lot of punks. 
and so just it was kind of funny to me that both of us you know named that as a game it's like oh yeah i remember that i remember dreaming of a game like cyberpunk 2077 or what we imagined it would be like way way back then and you know what a world like that could look like so it's kind of an honorable mention in the middle of the video here this next one i'm guessing will surprise most of you but that is william shatner's tech war now although I have no idea, honestly, what you think when you hear William Shatner, but the idea of the first true multimedia franchise that would go on to inspire such things as The Matrix and the cyberpunk role-playing games and eventually the video game and all sorts of things is probably not what jumps to your mind. But this was a thing, and it did happen, and many years before Lucasfilm came up with the idea for Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, or Sci-Fi Channel came up with the idea for Defiance, William Shatner came up with the concept of a franchise of comic books, books, video games, television movies, and TV series that were all tied together by the same creative group led by Shatner himself. And although, well, I'm going to talk about the franchise a bit here, and not just the video game, although I'm focusing on the game. I don't know how much I'll cover it in general in the other videos. But the thing about Tech War is it's almost in every different version of it that was released across different mediums. It's an, an example of Reach Exceeds Grasp. The Tech War video game is a great example of this, where it, it's basically trying to be Deus Ex five years before Deus Ex on a pretty small budget for what it was trying to do. And it's a kind of adventure shooter with light RPG elements, light police investigation elements. It's a lot of things. But with the technology they had at the time, the budget available, and the other star power besides William Shatner, of course, involved in the cinematic scenes, it just never was going to work in the way that I'm sure they imagined it. And that's pretty much true for Tech War in general. There were a lot of brilliant ideas, honestly, like a concept of what would, have, you know, basically inspire the Matrix, combined with a technological drug of a similar type to what we would see in Ghost in the Shell standalone complex many years later. And it was a lot of these great ideas that have made Tech War kind of stick in a lot of our minds, even though it's covered with a really kind of cheesy late 80s, early 90s, William Shatner guided cheeseball aesthetic but there's a lot of stuff in here that was gold and a lot of it made it into other cyberpunk franchises after this but even looking at this you can kind of see how it's like if cyberpunk 2077 had been made in 1995 this is probably what it would look like before we leave the 90s behind for those oh so edgy 2000s I have to mention the 1997 Blade Runner adventure game by Westwood Studios. Now, although I'm pretty sure all the references to Blade Runner in Cyberpunk 2077 are to the movie, or movies now, not this game, this game is fantastic, you should definitely play it, and I'm sure at least somebody at CD Projekt Red played this game and was inspired by it. This is one of the best cyberpunk video games that has ever been released. It's one of the great point-and-click adventure games. I definitely highly recommend you check this out. It's a great game, and it's based on Blade Runner. If you didn't know that there's a Blade Runner game out there that's good, there is, and this is it. I'm finally getting to the series that, for a lot of people, I think defines cyberpunk in video games, and that's the Deus Ex series. The first game released to almost universal acclaim and won most Game of the Year awards that year. And its sequel was pretty good, but mostly is remembered for not being as good as the first. Now the reboot games are excellent games in their own right, but again, mostly known for not being as good as the incredible original. But the entire series overall is by far the most successful continued cyberpunk video game series and has been many people's introduction to the genre in video games. The Deus Ex series has a fantastic combination of still being an action shooter in a lot of senses, but having fairly deep role-playing elements and customization of the character that a lot of people would say even modern games like Cyberpunk 2077 and its own sequels still have not matched to this day. The Deus Ex series 
in a lot of ways has defined what a good cyberpunk video game would be. And although none of them have quite had the scale of Cyberpunk 2077, it definitely did everything it tried to do very well. And that's true of all the games in the series when compared to other games that have not necessarily executed similar elements as well. The Deus Ex series as a whole does cyberpunk gameplay very effectively and in a way that's sort of tight and focused rather than the sort of sprawling concept of Cyberpunk 2077 where sometimes a lot of the cool things that your character can do are pointless and you just never get around to using them. Our next game some people might get mad at me for including, just like I've been criticized before for liking Bloober Team's games in general. Bloober Team's games, well let's just say they're the sincerest form of flattery. They often combine a book, a movie, a number of other video games, numerous inspirations, and they wear their inspirations on their sleeve so directly that it could almost be called plagiarism. But as someone who loves my favorite genres and really can't get enough, I absolutely love these games, and Observer is that to the cyberpunk genre, specifically it's a mashup of the plots of Blade Runner and Minority Report where your character is basically, he's like a memory detective in a trench coat. And it, well, it's awesome. And he's played by Rutger Hauer. So it, it, I, I mean, it, it's kind of, how could I not love this game? Even though there's not much to it besides that. So as our latest game released before Cyberpunk 2077, that I, I don't think that this game maybe inspired them that much, but it's more that this is directly inspired by things that directly inspired Cyberpunk 2077, and it's a Cyberpunk game, so I, I threw it on here. I, I guess I'm just kind of like thumbing my nose at people because I love Bloober Team games, even though I accept completely what they are, and I had a really good time with this one as well. So that'll do it for our video game section. Look forward to ones on movies and television and another on print media, so comic books, tabletop games, novels. And I'm again going to focus on ones that were historically significant to the genre and just a few that were special to me or I had a lot of fun with. And we'll do them similar to this, so look forward to that in the near future. Thank you for watching Deconstructing the Game.